Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition here of the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg Sykes. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell when you do. So what is wrong with the secondary? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot. That's a loaded question. You know, it seems like it's not just one game. But we have to go back to even last season and we look at what is wrong with the secondary. Time and time again, game in and game out, we often see the secondary get burnt. Now, it's not every single game that they're going to allow, you know, multiple huge chunk plays. But they do seem like they allow at least one big play per game which in my opinion is one too many but you know that that's that's beside the point the thing is is that far too often you see the secondary out of position uh miscommunication just you know clueless at times and you see them more times than not going looking at each other going And what is that a sign of? You feel like it could be one of two things, or maybe both things. One, it could be a sign that uh, they are not studying tape. Uh, they are not understanding the playbook. Uh, they're not understanding their job. Okay, maybe that's more than one thing. <laughs> um, or number two, it's coaching. Now... It's very easy to say that coaching is horrible on the secondary um, because at the end of the day, you can only coach so hard. You can only say the right things to people so many times until finally they either get it or they don't. And I'm sorry, but we've had pretty much the same players since last year in the secondary these guys should be able to know what their role is at this point and this i believe i believe i want to say this is pretty much the second year that all these guys have been together on one team so by year two you should be able to have some most of this stuff straightened out you should be able to know how to communicate with each other you should know each other's tendencies enough to know exactly what they're going to be doing. You've, you're in this system for the second year. Uh, for some of these folks, their third year. And so you should be able to know exactly what the plays are going to be. You should know what's expected of you. And so whenever there's a miscommunication, that tells me that's more on the player than the coaching. Now, the coaching, you could say the issue with the coaching is that they're not being effective enough in getting the point across to the players. Now, that's where the bad coaching comes into, and that could possibly be. Um, and then sometimes, too, it could be that the scheme is just not right. Well... I find it hard to believe that the scheme, that there's something wrong with the schemes. I truly believe that in the NFL, if you make it to the NFL level um, and you create schemes and plays and stuff like that on a professional level, you should be able to be pretty good to the point to where you know that this stuff works. So I, I don't worry about that as much as I, I worry about the, the part of being able to effectively communicate how that these schemes are supposed to work to your players. And I feel like if you have been able to make it to the professional level as a coach, as a position coach at least, and then as a, a coordinator or whatnot, you are probably trusted enough to be able to communicate that effectively with the players, okay? So I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure if it's on the coaching as much as it really comes down to the players executing. And I do not believe the players have been executing 
well. I don't believe, I really think when you look at it, you break it down, if you can look at the tape, you're probably going to see this player was out of position on this play. He should have been here, should have zigged when he zagged, and this happens on a consistent basis. And the problem is, is that you can say, well, we need to just get rid of this player, right? Well, you know, unfortunately, the NFL is not necessarily what you call real world employment where you can just fire this person and then, you know, put an ad in the paper. Um, okay, that's showing my age. You know, put the ad in Indeed and and see if you can um, get somebody to, to hire, you know, to fill that position next week. Sometimes you're kind of left with what you have. And there's probably nobody else that can really, that is as good to fill that position. Now, that's the other thing. That's not to say that these players are bad players. I think on the athletic ability, they're the best. You know, the cream of the crop are, are the ones who rise to the top, the ones who are going to win the starting positions in training camp. But that does not necessarily mean that they are the best at what they do. And they should always strive to be the best at what they should do. They should always strive to perfect their work. And I think some of these players don't do that. I think some of these players strive just enough to win a starting position, and then that's that's pretty much that's it. Now, you know, there were some unfortunate situations uh the one play where um william jackson the third slipped in the end zone and tried to recover to knock the ball away but at that point it was too late the touchdown was scored okay is this a problem with equipment is this a problem with your cleats because i'm telling you this was inside this was this had nothing to do with weather and he slipped okay so you know, what's the issue there? You should not be slipping on a surface that has not seen weather. So that's a problem. Um, so is it, again, is it at a position? You know, are you reacting? Are you almost there, but you're, you're, you're at a position and you're trying to recover and then you wind up slipping? There was another play with William Jackson, yes, I'm picking on him, where he chose to double-team a wide receiver and go out the out route with him, letting another receiver cross in the middle wide open. And, you know, even if this receiver became covered when he got to the left side, there was still plenty of time for him to pick up a huge chunk of play, uh, chunk of yards, and you know Jackson didn't follow that guy. There was there was enough coverage that I think that he could have been okay going with this other guy who was in, in the crossing. So I think that was a mistake. You know, Fuller had you know Fuller made some good plays, but he has also been out of position as well. And really, the, the corners, I think the corners, that's where we have had the weakest issues. You know, <clears throat> safeties, I don't think have been as bad. Uh, you tend to put people in the safety positions because, well, they're normally not going to be the ones lined up man-to-man, -man, per se. They're going to be in coverage helping out. Um, they're going to be double-teaming a lot of times. They're going to kind of stay in a zone, so to speak. Um, they're going to be right there to hopefully to help knock the ball away or intercept the ball or, or to lay the hit. Um, so they're more of a sport role usually. Um, and I'm, you know, it's a blanket statement. I realize that's not always the case, but it really, to me, it's been more on our, our, our corners, you know, and Benjamin St. Juice, you know, we, we have, you know, um, We've come down hard on him as well. Uh, a lot of fans have. I've seen him a lot of times. He's been right there uh, with pretty good coverage on his man. 
but he can't seem to knock the ball away. He just, right there at last, he can't do what he needs to do to complete the play, and the receivers usually wind up being able to catch the ball. But he's right there, and I think that takes time, and just, you know, he needs more time in the NFL to develop. So that I'm not quite as down on as some of these other guys who have been in the league for a few years now. So to sum up all of that, what is wrong with the defense? I think communication definitely. um, They need to start learning how to communicate well. They need to get back. They need to get their noses back into the playbook, and they need to learn it. I don't think they've ever learned the playbook. I think that's another reason why you often see them out of position. And again, maybe that is coaching, but I think the coaches can only tell them so many times until they're just blue in their face. I think at some point the players either have to be intelligent intelligent enough to be able to get it or they just don't have it in that sense. And I'm trying I am not trying to say that they're dumb people. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we have seen mistakes far too often. Far too often, and it's got to stop. Let me know in the comments section what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Um, let me know either way. Just keep it clean. Uh, again, really try to support this channel. Uh, you can support this channel by subscribing, first of all. Uh, when you do, hit that notification bell so you know when I come out with video releases. I don't always come out with releases uh, at the same exact time every day, so uh, be looking out for that. Uh, you can also support this channel on Patreon. Right now my Patreon is a little dead, but if you want to start supporting me over there, I'm going to try to revamp it. Um, you don't have to, you know, support me with the biggest chunk amount. You can support me with whatever you can. Um, you can also support me uh, by just donating through, you know, Cash App or Venmo or anything like that. Uh, well, let me show you. Seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired.